Today, we finally get to open up the mysterious box in Black Armory via the launch of Niobe Labs and the fourth forge, Bagusia. So we have a pretty exciting video today here, guys, with a lot of grind for sure. Let's break down how to complete the mysterious box quest, things that you'll want to know about Bagusia and Niobe Labs, the final key for the mysterious box, as well as the mold to create it. And of course, we'll talk about the ultimate reward for this effort. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's going to be a bit of a long one. So let's jump straight into it. So here we are guys, before we jump in and talk about the quest, of course, we should speak about the rewards. So the reward for the mysterious box ultimately will be the Izanagi's Burden Sniper that you can see right here. Very briefly before we talk about the quest, of course, it comes with the perk Honed Edge. Holding Reload consumes the magazine and loads around with additional range and damage. We've also got Chambered Compensator, Accurized Rounds, Outlaw, and composite stock. This isn't a review or anything, but very briefly, the weapon feels decent to use. You can see right here that I've actually got that reloaded or charged shot, so I've consumed all of the rounds in the magazine. And hitting this guy in the Lost Sector in EDZ, we get 12,153 damage, which is very nearly half of his health right there. So I load in another kind of overcharged shot, take a huge chunk off and then kill him and some of the other enemies. And we get that tasty outlaw reload as well. So that's a very, very brief look at the weapon. Could be pretty good when it comes to kind of single targets, very tanky targets. But now, of course, let's speak about how you actually pick this thing up. Now, considering this reward comes from the Mysterious Box quest, initially, you do have to collect the box from the cave in the European Dead Zone, and then charge each of the first three forges to maximum temper, and this will enable you to get the first three keys, so I will link a video with that info down below. So firstly, now that the Bagusia Forge is available in the game, Ada 1 will actually have a new quest for you, and this will be for the Key Mold. As far as we know, though, this does require the completion of all of the other forges, and to acquire all of the other keys for the Mysterious Box. But once you've acquired the key mold from Ada 1, there'll be a few different steps that you'll need to complete. Initially, we'll have to head to the underbelly of Leviathan and collect lenses from each of the watchers. I'll timestamp a section of the video at the end which has a full guide to doing this. But initially, you can unlock the underbelly on the levers down here by putting in the passcode, and that'll be 1, 5, 3, 2, 4, and 6. And this can be done 100% solo. On top of this, you will find Leviathan itself at the bottom of the map on Nessus. When it comes to killing watchers on Leviathan, initially, we did think that we'd have to kill all of the watchers because that's actually what's listed on the quest step. However, you can farm the same room over and over. So engine room would be the best place to do this. But once again, I'll link a clip at the end that you can check out if you need to. Sometimes it's a little bit inconsistent when it comes to the drops from watchers, but generally whenever one is taken down by someone in your fire team, you should get one of the watcher lenses dropped. So it's just literally a case of farming them, going into the room, clearing it out, going back out and repeating that process until you're done. Once you've got this section of the key quest completed, you'll need to collect Glimmering Amethyst. Now this is actually going to come from strike chests as well as public events and caches in different locations. As far as we know, pretty much the best way to do this will be to complete public events. We actually went to the European Dead Zone because you have a lot of different events going off at a given time. But when you complete a heroic public event, you'll get 10 Glimmering Amethyst. You will actually have to collect 200 of these, so it is going to take a little while, maybe around an hour. I believe this is pretty much the fastest way to do it. Some folks have been jumping into the Lake of Shadow Strike in the European Dead Zone because you can complete that one very, very quickly. You do get 20 of these materials dropped every time you clear that, and you can do that in just a few minutes. So really, it's up to you guys as to which one you think is faster, but it's going to take a similar amount of time nonetheless. Once this is done, though, we can finally head into the Bagusia Forge. And this will be part of the next quest step. We'll also need to charge this to maximum temper. Of course, that means we'll need to destroy the drones between the first and second wave. So the forge itself doesn't really need too many tips. It is a little bit tougher than some of the other ones. I believe this is 650. But to find the drones that you'll need, firstly, you've got this big kind of open round room. You can see these large red pipes on the outside. One of the drones is going to spawn on the left hand side of that. You can see on the pillar right here. And the other drone is going to spawn on the left hand side of the map on the pillar on the outside of the ruins that you can see. Take both of these down and you'll have maximum temper. Then you'll simply need to complete the rest of Bagusia Forge. Of course, pretty typical Forge experience. The only difference really being that you do actually have a walker at the end. And this isn't defended by Forge drones, so you can take it down pretty quickly, especially if you've got something like Black Spindle or Whisper of the Worm, as I should call it after nearly a year. But once you get this done, a chest will spawn near the Forge as always when you get maximum temper, and this will drop the Black Armory keys. So now we've finally forged the key and we can actually open up the mysterious box. When this opens up, spoiler alert, of course, we will end up receiving an artifact or a decryption device, and we'll need to take this back to to Ada 1 in the tower. So when we see her, she's actually going to give us a list of components that we'll need to go and find and then craft to make an unidentified frame. 
So firstly, we're going to have to complete a rare Black Armory bounty, and when we turn this in, we'll get an item called the Obsidian Crystal. Now the thing to note about the rare Black Armory bounty that we're going to need right here is that you won't be given one as part of this quest. So essentially, you'll need to get one dropped organically, and these can drop randomly when you turn in daily Black Armory bounties. It seems that the chances increase when you turn in a lot of bounties at once, but of course, that is likely to be the case anyway, because you need to turn in bounties to actually get one dropped. Some folks have been saving these, I did shout this out a couple of weeks ago, and it's turned out to definitely be useful for me I had one saved and I simply turned it in immediately if you do need to find one then you'll have to start completing the daily bounties and of course they are pretty rare I know a lot of folks have been grinding for them and haven't had much luck so this is going to be one of the more difficult parts of the quest potentially so good luck getting those bounties dropped but once you find the black armory bounty of course you can turn it in and when you claim this while you're on the unidentified frame step you'll actually get the obsidian crystal consumable you can see right here you'll simply need to hold consume on this and it will collect it for that unidentified frame step which will give you the next part of the quest so up next we'll actually have to complete the shattered throne that's right jumping back into the dungeon from forsaken will be a requirement of this quest step you'll simply have to complete the entire dungeon when you kill Dunn and Karu you'll get the Ascendant Glass Shard dropped. And you can use checkpoints for this as well, so if you have a checkpoint at Dolankaru, you can jump in on that and clear this. If not, you'll need to run the entire way through to get that Glass Shard. And I will link a video down below with some tips for the Shattered Throne in case you've never completed it. I will say though, definitely, for the most part, it's gonna be fire team material for a lot of this quest, so do bear that in mind. However, once you've completed the Shattered Throne section, You'll immediately have a quest where you'll need to jump into the Pyramidion to collect a Radiant Face Glass for the Unidentified Frame. So this is actually be a mission marker on IO. Load onto IO, head to the marker that you'll see, and you can start up this Pyramidion run. You do actually get a locked loadout here. I believe we had modifiers of Solar, Heavyweight, and Extinguish. So do bear those in mind. If you wipe here, you will be going to Warbit as well. Although you don't have a timer for this, so you can take it pretty easy as you go through the strike. And much like the Shattered Throne section, when you finish this mission version of the strike, you'll get the Radiant Phase Glass dropped. So it's definitely been a good grind so far. We're getting kind of close to finishing this one up, guys. Once we've collected all of the items in the quest steps here, it's time to go and craft the frame in the Bagusia Forge. So once again, we'll have to jump back into that new forge, same as before, and get a clear. For the Bagusia Forge clear though, it will once again be a specific mission version of this called Lock and Key. You can see it in the outskirts on the European Dead Zone right here. Once again, head to the mission marker, start it up, and now we'll have to drive up to Niobe Labs and Bagusia. Essentially here you have a special version of this where you defeat civics finally. For us it wasn't too difficult, we are a fire team at max power. We mostly stayed on the bottom side of the map, pretty much where you spawn in. We used the cover right here, kill some of the ads, we didn't find that they were too obnoxious to be honest. Civics has a little bit of health, but for the most part it's going to be fairly easy to take down if you've come this far in the quest already i don't think you'll have too many issues on this final mission step once we finally take him down we'll get an item right here that we can see is called not a weapon and we'll have to return to ada one once again she actually has some pretty cool dialogue right here but this is where she'll give us the izanagi's burden sniper once again a really cool weapon and there's a hint that it can be used to uncover more secrets this quest has certainly been a pretty good grind once again, I'll link a video down below about obtaining the box and the first three keys, but I do also want to share a full guide to the underbelly for the Watcher lenses with a full route on where to find what you need. But I hope this video has been useful for you guys. Definitely a mega quest line right here. I think the weapon is pretty neat, but I'll look into that in more detail a little bit later on. For now though, if you have enjoyed the video, a rating really helps me out down below. Be sure to share this video with your friends completing this quest line. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button to see everything related to Destiny 2 right here. Once again, here's a guide to the underbelly sections, and I'll catch you guys very soon.